Welcome back to Velf Creations. Today we will be going over our recent addition to our channel, the new Com Marker Omni One UV Laser that will be joining our current 60 watt MOPA. Let's get started. We want to start off by giving a big thank you to Com Marker for sending us their new UV laser to test out and share with you in this video. If you follow us on social media, you might have already caught some sneak peeks of us using this laser in a few projects. This is actually our very first UV laser, and we wanted to spend more time with it before creating this review to ensure we had the chance to test a wide variety of materials and fully gather our thoughts. It's important to note that Com Marker did not preview or influence this video before its release. What you're about to see are our genuine thoughts and first-hand experiences with this laser. Now, if you're interested in seeing an unboxing and full setup, we've got you covered. Since we've already shared that in one of our shorts, we will have a few links in the video description just in case you want to watch that after this video. Like most of the Com Marker machines, the Omni One is designed with three main parts, starting with the base. Here, we've placed it side by side with the B4 for comparison. As you can see, the Omni One's height is about half that of the B4, making it a more compact option. The base plate, however, remains the same, featuring identical hole sizes and spacing. This means that any jigs or fixtures you already use with other Com Marker machines should fit seamlessly without any modifications. Definitely a thoughtful touch for users upgrading or expanding their setups. On the front of the machine, you'll find a familiar array of buttons. These include the standard power button, up and down buttons to adjust the laser focus, and an emergency stop button for added safety. We'll unlock the emergency stop and press the power button to get the Omni One up and running in just a moment. But before that, let's take a closer look at the rest of its features. The second key part of the Com Marker laser is the arm that holds the laser head. The Omni One's arm is incredibly sturdy and features a measuring guide for easy focusing. You can adjust it using a top knob for manual tweaks or a motor for precise movements. It's powered by a separate cable that connects to the base. Around the back of the Omni, you'll find a long cable that's actually a bundle of three. Unlike fiber lasers with delicate fiber optic cables, this bundle only contains power and data cables for the laser head. In theory, this design should make it much more durable over time. On the back of the base, you'll find a range of ports designed for versatility. These include connections for power, a rotary tool, a foot pedal, and a data port to connect to your computer. There's also a port labeled for an enclosure, though we haven't seen any official announcements about one yet. Now we're on to the last part, part three of three, the laser head. One glance at it, and it's clear why the Omni One's base is much lower and its arm significantly stronger. Unlike the Com Marker B4, the Omni uses a UV laser, and the key difference is that the laser is generated directly in the laser head itself rather than in the base. This design makes the laser head heavier, requiring the sturdier arm we talked about earlier. The Omni also ships with two lenses, a 70 by 70 millimeter lens and a 150 by 150 millimeter lens. These provide flexibility based on your project needs. The smaller lens focuses more energy into a compact area for intricate work while the larger lens trades a bit of energy efficiency to cover a broader engraving area, perfect for bigger items. For this video, we'll be working exclusively with the 150 by 150 millimeter lens, so if you're planning to replicate our settings, keep this in mind. Another key difference of the Omni compared to other lasers is its dual power buttons, one for the base and another for the laser head. Once you power on the base, you'll notice a flashing light on the laser head's power button, when you press this button, the laser head will begin its warm-up process, which takes about two minutes. Once it's ready, the button changes to a solid green light, indicating that the laser is good to go. At this point, you'll notice a very tiny dot on the base plate. UV light is tricky to see on certain materials, like metals, which is why Com Marker includes this helpful green acrylic piece. When placed on the base, it lights up, making the dot much easier to see especially when framing your project. On top of the laser head, there's also a button to toggle the focusing lights. These two lights work together, 
and when they overlap on your material, you'll know the laser is in perfect focus. This feature makes it a lot easier to ensure your engravings are sharp and precise. Focus can be easily adjusted using the knob on top of the laser or with the two buttons located on the front of the machine. Now that we've got everything set up, let's dive into some projects and see the Omni One in action. For our first project, we just had to try engraving glass. If you're new to the channel, we primarily review blue light and IR fiber lasers, both of which have their limitations when it comes to glass. With those lasers, you usually need to apply a layer of paint or coating to help the laser stay on the surface, as the light tends to pass right through. UV lasers, on the other hand, are perfect for glass. They can engrave directly onto it, creating an incredibly smooth, high-quality surface. Just a quick heads up, we're still fine-tuning the settings, so some results might vary, but we were really happy with the outcome and wanted to share our progress with you. For this design, we mirrored it and engraved it on the underside of the coaster. This way, the top remains smooth, giving your drink a flat surface to rest on. We used a high lines per inch setting for this first attempt, which made the engraving process take about 16 minutes. However, you can significantly reduce the engraving time by lowering the LPI, which is something we'll likely experiment with in future projects to speed things up. And just like that, we have a beautifully personalized coaster. The level of detail is fantastic, and we're excited to explore more materials with this UV laser. But before we move on, let's try another glass piece. This time, we're going to create a custom mason jar with a flower design to celebrate the month of August. For this attempt, we lowered the lines per inch to 3,000, and it took about 7 minutes for a single pass. During the pass, we noticed that part of the engraving appeared brighter than the rest. We thought that it was because we hadn't leveled the mason jar properly. After running it again, we think it might have actually been an accumulation of glass dust, which could have been wiped away, cutting the total time. Despite that, we're really happy with how the small details turned out, and the overall result is great. Now, here's a fun question for you. What's one glass project you've always wanted to try but couldn't because of the limitations of your current setup? Let us know in the comments below, and maybe we'll feature it in one of our upcoming shorts. All right, glass, check. Now, let's move on to the next material. We were definitely excited to try engraving glass, but the first time we tried wood, we were absolutely blown away. The UV light creates such a tiny dot size, and the line is so tight that, at first, we thought that nothing was happening and it wouldn't cut all the way through the base wood. But then, as we kept watching, we saw the pieces start to fall away. So satisfying. Another major benefit of UV lasers is how little to no charring there is. This means post-processing is a breeze, and you don't have to worry about cleaning up burnt edges or dark marks, which is something we love about using UV for wood projects. Engraving wood also works really well and leaves a nice clean look too. Both of these wood tries were done in real time, so it is pretty quick. We ended up also cutting 8th inch walnut and maple, harder woods like rosewood and purple heart. And although it does take quite a few passes, the results are really nice. We started working on rings and inlays because the cuts were so precise and clean. You can check those projects out on our social media or at the start of this video. Next, we wanted to try out some laser-safe leather. During our testing of this, we noticed that the laser light that is on all the time before you hit start will actually mark this leather. Something to keep in mind because some materials react much faster to the UV light. We are not entirely sure if this is just an issue with the leather, but something to keep in mind when you have your hands near it. It is really impressive how much detail you can get with this machine, Oftentimes those details get burned away with a blue light laser, but here it is nice and clear. This leather also has a heat-activated adhesive on the back, and with our previous projects we noticed that adhesive melting and then sticking back together when we cut out the patches, but with the Omni that is not an issue. In this next example we wanted to do leather again, and it was definitely a bit more tricky to frame since the UV light doesn't really show up on the patch, and using the acrylic moved the patch sometimes. 
Also, we had our speed a bit too high for this amount of detail, so some areas were missing. We dropped it down and tried again. The second pass filled in those missing areas and created a darker, deeper engraving. We really like the finished, darker result, but next time we will most likely reduce the speed on the first pass and increase the pulse width, and that will help keep some of that leather texture and prevent the engraving from going too deep. Slate and other stones also perform exceptionally well with the Omni one. Unlike some lasers that only mark the surface, this UV laser can achieve a deeper engraving, giving your projects added depth and detail. As soon as the engraving begins, you'll notice some stone dust coming off the top, a good sign that the laser is cutting into the material effectively. The results were impressive, but we're going to continue tweaking the settings to see if we can achieve an even brighter, crisp white finish. Next, we're going to do a bit of a speed run through the rest of the projects, which include metal, plastic, and paper. We had a little less time to fine-tune the settings for these, so they're not final just yet. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on social media to catch our upcoming shorts, where we'll share the optimized settings. One thing we noticed while testing these materials is that sometimes our first attempt didn't turn out perfectly. However, the Omni One UV laser is surprisingly forgiving when your settings aren't spot on. As long as you don't move your piece, you can simply adjust the settings and rerun the engraving to get it just right. It's a game changer for tricky materials. As we wrap up these projects, let's quickly share our thoughts on the Omni One, starting with a couple of areas that we had some issues with. Framing and engraving speed limits. First, framing. UV lasers inherently pose challenges in this area because the light isn't as visible to the naked eye. While the acrylic sheet that COM marker includes does help make the dot easier to spot, the process can still feel a bit cumbersome, especially when working with materials that don't react strongly to UV light. So using jigs and the alignment brackets will help a lot with this laser. Next is the engraving speed. Although the Omni One is capable of faster speeds, we found ourselves rarely pushing it beyond 1,000 mm per second. With smaller, more detailed designs, higher speeds can cause issues, like the laser not having enough time to mark the material properly or skewing and warping the design. That said, faster speeds might be more achievable for larger, less intricate projects, but it's something we'll continue to test and explore. That wraps up our overview of the Omni One. We had an absolute blast testing out this laser and experimenting with a variety of materials. There's still so much more to explore, and we can't wait to share more videos with you in the future, so stay tuned. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let us know what other projects or materials you'd like to see us try next. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, stay creative.